podcast listeners. If you hear my voice right now, I need you to do something for me. I want you to take out your phone or on your computer, go to Apple Podcasts, search for Ask Your Old Head Podcast. You see my, my logo, my little picture, my little image there. Find the show. Please rate and write a review. It's a small thing, but it helps others find this work and find what I'm doing here. And it really, really matters, uh, as small as that may seem. So if you could please do that uh, before we get into the show, I very much appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Let's get into it. Peace. So before we get started with this episode, I want to say thank you for listening and tuning in to the Ash Your Old Head Podcast. Uh, this is another Good Brothers edition. And so um, this particular recording is, you know, probably right on time. But it was recorded, we were traveling, um, as you hear, towards the end of our conversation today. And, um, you know, as just a reminder, the value of moving through the world with people uh, cannot be undersold. Uh, as always, you know, when you tune in and listen to these conversations, you know, uh, please take the best part for yourself and, um, you know, feel free to give comment or send us a message uh, if you uh, have some thoughts about what you've heard. Um, you know, you feel free to use any of the social media vehicles uh, or if you are connected in some more intimate way, you know, send a brother a text message. So in any event, um, you know, hope you enjoy this conversation and uh, we'll be back. Peace. Peace. I'm Majestic. My man, Justice. Uh, so, um, as it may sound when people listen, that we are actually in the room together, and um, and we and we saved at least this opening piece of this conversation. You know, now that a few days of summer, um, there's been uh, how you say, you know, comments and posts and you know commentary from a variety of sources, but basically on live television. Um, uh, Will Smith smacked um, Chris Rock in the face, um, and after comments, a joke that um, Chris Rock did that was particularly hurtful um, to his, you know, Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, the ensuing debate about if he shouldn't, should he shouldn't have, was it right, was it wrong? You know, was he defending his wife? Is defending your wife in that way appropriate? Uh, violence is not the answer. Oh, you should be able to thick skin. Um, to a very good po- good piece by Roxanne Gay, I said that one reads about like later kind of for your concept of thick skin, like how thick do my skin need to be to um, several other points. And you know, as as I tend to lean to, you know the the need in our society and quite often the demand that when things happen that there's a requirement for us to jump on some side. You know, I've, I've kind of derived that whole idea as wildly unhealthy, especially for black people, because um, often leaves us in this place uh, where, quite frankly, um, I mean, even though both of them, I say, are closer in age to us, but we could look at them as entertainers of our, you know, our arc of, uh, of you know, of life. So it's kind of whack to see them, see that happen in face. But I guess just <laughs> let's start from. What was your, I don't know, visceral or first sort of just thought about this circle? Like, what's something that is extractable? So, my first thought was like, this is fake. I thought Doctor I thought Doctor Umar was was playing a joke on us to show that you know the, the craziness of white supremacy. I, I just thought like it was fake, like it was staged. Like, what do you mean, Paul got on stage and smacked another dude? And, you know. It, I want to start with not supporting, not supporting wanton violence, but I will also want to be, it's very interesting, we'll be like, we don't support violence, but like we stand by and watch violence be uh, done to people, to countries, to a whole bunch of people. But, you know, we get into this violence thing, right? Uh, when we choose to have the moral high road. But so, yeah, at first I was like, you know, like Bobby Hemmett, like fake news, like, you know what I mean? Clone. <laughs> it's fake news 
and then um it then it becomes memes and then it becomes attached to Philadelphia, which you know, if he had some ancestral memory of being down Fifty Second Street and having to defend himself, that may be that may or may not be the case. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and then I guess I, I, one thing I want to say, and I know you, one thing I just wanted to, to to have a conversation about this here is, man, people go through shit, man. And I, and I'm not saying that it's okay for them to go do things and harm people, but I will say that you know there are people in our society, man, and and I think in some ways we've expanded our we tried to expand at least the conversation around the care economy, I'm trying to say like people have mental health issues need to deal with them, but sometimes when we're talking about that, you start to see people with real mental health issues, and we then have a challenge dealing with them individually, while we say collectively we should be like this. There's clearly something going on there, man. <laughs> you know, it's clearly something. And 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 you know, before we add on, I just say this: like, while I didn't read the book, I read enough think pieces that he did when the book came out to be clear that he has lived with the kind of some emo- deep emotional pressure his entire life. Um, and I think through it all, to your point about thick skin has held it with a high regard and we've honored him holding it in a high regard. And, you know, can we be open to the possibility that it just went left? Yeah. And and what, and what that means, you know, not even to go back over whatever happened with him and his wife and their relationships, because they don't, that doesn't have to be the thing that sent him over the edge. You could or couldn't, it doesn't have to be right. So, yeah, the the thing that I so I, I've uh, on this in our conversations here and in other spaces I've spoke to the idea that sometimes in our life you know and I and I'm not judging it I'm not saying that it should be that way but we may have the like I always joke with my staff and my my old John and people I've worked with like you know when you get to a certain place whatever the dynamic of your family. Right, and there might be there's a time when you go be with family, and there's like a there's a the time on the clock where you go, you know what I'm doing? I'm going home because y'all about to get into that other stuff, right? Where if somebody been going through it, they gonna have had it enough drinks to start acting up. That's right. Or it's it, called late in the night after after dinner, and right. every and everybody's sitting around and they got music going. Usually, you know, I guess in our time, some seventies, right? They stuff had on. The music playing. Somebody's it's, playing cards. Yeah, somebody playing cards. Somebody in the back is watching television. Yeah, and then like a, there's a thump or a. Well, I ain't never like your uncle anyway. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and 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 there's a trauma there. There's these other things, right? 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 Where we learn to go like, you know, when you're a kid, you can't escape it. So maybe you know the kids is upstairs and they make you go to bed or something. When you get older though, that's the, that those lingering memories are with you. Now, what does that have to do with this moment? It's the thing of something happens and someone feels they need to do something, but the set of things that they think are the right things to do, they chose the wrong one, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and then, you know, I can't escape the thing of like, like if he really, really wanted to hurt him, like it could have been a real much uglier thing than like walking up there and smack him. Like in my mind, it was like, I'm upset, I'm triggered. I start, well, I, I got out my seat. Damn it, I'm already walking. I can't stop walking and go sit back down. That's right. Like, or at least, you know, my, my ego yeah, might not let me because yeah. I done stood up. Because then then the commentary is going to be, oh, he got up like he was going to do something, but then he got, you know. It, right, it, but, it, right. It's crazy. But we would have done something. But see, but black folks would have talked about you. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to name it. Black folks talked about you. Why you get up? So you're going to do something if you wasn't going to do nothing. One person's restraint. So therefore, if he feel like he, I got to go now and, right. and, and get up here because people will say, Right, you I knew you was a sucker. See, you was, you was about to do something, but then you, you always know. act like you're gonna do something. Then when you went, did it. And do you know what they do said? And this is real rap. That's why Jada messed with the young boy. Right. So imagine that's in your head. Right. All of those. Right. Because this is like this is the because I, I think it's really important and it is something for me as somebody who, who, contrary people may not know, despite my sweet, demeaning, loving nature, I have a very short temper. Yeah, I grew up right. my whole life with yeah, a short no temper. Idea. And I learned through process to to experience my short temper and find other ways to do to respond to things. 
right? Instead of you know yelling loud and or approaching somebody, right? You know, or, you which know, is a possibility, me. right? Which is a possibility. Instead of you know when I flashback when I, uh, you know, I got, I was a bad call. They 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 did me dirty in dodgeball. I was so furious. I walked off the field. I kicked the fence and went into the gym. Went back into school. Everybody's like, "Why he headbutt the fence?" I didn't headbutt the fence. I kicked it. But the point was being, you know what everybody did? They left me the hell alone. Even the teacher was like, "Damn, I ain't never seen him act like that. I'm just right. I." Nobody called my mom. There wasn't no meetings. They just right. said he was having a rough one today. Right. He went. We went too far, right? I I had to learn how to when because when you when you're starting to lose it, all of the different least for me, all the different reasons why you're here show up and again they're not always the most virtuous and they're not always like yeah, because i am an honorable warrior of the right. of the knights of the order of righteousness and therefore i must it's like sometimes it's like they ain't gonna talk about me like that this person ain't gonna, they always hated me the you know whatever interleasing yeah, right. stuff is floating around and i'm sure for homie you know and, and it and it even showed itself obviously you know people cheap jokes social media oh why you ain't do that to boy why you ain't say that to so-and-so right you wouldn't have did that if it was this other person. It's like all of that middle school right. people pumping you up to fight stuff. That's right. And you might say, well, he's a grown man. He's like almost 50 years old or is 50 years old. How could he? I'm like, all of that stuff is still in us. Like all that stuff is in us and you might do a good job of keeping, staying up in the upper front part of your frontal cortex, right. but then you might lose it. Right. right. And so when someone actually loses it, our... Right. Rightfully, we should like, yo, Will, you shouldn't hit that. That wasn't cool. Right. Understood. Chris Rock on the other side, you know, you got them deal with, like, <laughs> should I, should I, like, smacked Will back? Like, should we have just gotten to a fisticuffs? Which he was like, obviously, I can't do that. Right. Like, and people, you know, well, Will's bigger than him and all this other stuff. I'm like, that ain't got nothing to do with fighting. I mean, it does in, like, weight classes matter, but there's a certain thing of, like, if you know, like, I shouldn't fight this man in the middle of this. Right. I got a tuxedo on. I got this velvet, you know, situation on here. I ain't supposed to be fighting this man, even though he came up here. I don't know what he's about to do to me, but I can't fight him. Because right. that'll be even worse. <laughs> like if they were just wrestling around, <laughs> and they had that, like, they had that, like you know what? the camera. You, that like, like imagine you in your mind, he smacks Will, Will smacks him, then, then he go like, Chris jumps back in his stance, comes with an overhand left, right? And it just is wrestle, wrestling. Right. It's bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Chris is like, hold up, I can't right. I can't go out. Like it could have gone worse. It could be really, really bad. So, like on a different level. Um so so circling into and and, I, and it's like to me, we can look at all the different things that analyze the point and accept them, right? Like, yeah, you know, I, I mean, there's some like the setback to race type talk. I'd be like, I don't, setback from what? I don't think about the white gaze that much. So Hold on, let me, I want to touch still. <laughs> because that's not my bag. Let me just. I know that some people's Let bad. me just touch that. If you assert that when we do something bad, quote unquote bad, if you think it's bad, again, now I could say it wasn't as tasteful. I could say maybe it wasn't as thoughtful. The, you think that sets us back years? Cause, cause good white folks gonna see us do that. What did the good white folks did it set us forward when they became millionaires? Did it did it make the race better? Like you know, like I told my pop, I think there's a certain group of black folks that still have this idea of the the the, the racial covenant we all made, the kind the social contract that black folks I think until a relatively recent point had. Right, you know, you always had groups of people who say, "I don't give a damn what y'all think," but you had a, this this contract, like, man, you know, we're gonna we're gonna act on behalf of us all, right? But then, for a variety of reasons, I don't think most of us function like that. I don't think Will Smith nor Chris Rock are going outside with the social contract. I mean, I think you know, back in their mind, they know they black, right. but not that like everything they do has to be like right. the most pristine for black people. I just I don't think that's the case. So this idea that, you know, and I wonder, do we put that on all of each, we put that on each other every day, right? Like, I don't have an issue with it per se, but when somebody walk out with a bonnet on and slippers that's dusty on the back of them with socks, they, they, okay, are you setting the race back? 
Right. Do do we got to, or should we do? Do we have to wear suits every day? Like, what is actually the place that is representative of the race? And a further one to probe: Does that mean that the entertainer is the race man? That the entertainer is the race woman? Right? Like, when? Why do we affix that to them? Right. You know, and then say, well, because you know, don't matter if you're rich or not, black people still gonna be violent. Interesting story. We got a whole industry of videos where people pull guns out <laughs> and we and we openly sell it to the world. And people have made a lot of money, right? right. Off of that. Yeah. And then we debate because these two guys, because one guy clearly jumps the shark. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, went over the edge. And and then it gets into like, you know, re- removing the 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 basic analysis of, of American society is one of the most rapaciously violent societies in the history of societies, right? right? Within the structure of the narrative, you know, I mean, there's much better scholars on the, even just the dynamic of, of guns and the relationship with guns, not necessarily in our community, but in, you know, what we would frame as white communities and the history of that as the, under, the subtle text of we will kill whatever other people to have the space. Right, it's a you know a, a country that has not found a way to not be in some sort of active what we could at least call an active conflict in any ten year span in the history of the country. Let's all settle down <laughs> on the like black people so violent, right? That's a narrative that someone else is pushing and then acting as if others are not violent. Um, you know, not to speak to you know the other forms of violence that we endure. You know what I'm saying within this society, um, and the conditions that have been fostered for certain populations of people, certain populations of our community to act in ways that you know might be harmful on the inter or intra community level, right? Mm-hmm. Like again, both multiple things can be true, right? You know, and I think um, people have tried to force this situation, like we force most situations, to be an either or. To to affix blame more to one person because someone has to be more wrong than the other person. Yeah. And you know, it's just to, to to make sure it's not lost. I mean, you know, there's other part of this where it's just the idea that I mean, I like I thought like even on talking about what happened, and, and I wanna circle touch on two points. One, I wanna talk about Jada Pink Smith and um Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry in the moment checking on both of the, them, like what mm-hmm. happened, right? Checking on Chris, checking on Will. Um, talk about Jada. Mm-hmm. I could imagine, you know, whatever the dynamics of their, you know, challenges and, and, and the way, you know, publicly we make jokes, uh, entanglement, all that stuff. But they've been, these people have been together. Since the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. So whatever the unhealthy challenge and whatever pieces of their relationship may be, this person's been in a long term. I can understand, you know, looking over and seeing that person suddenly have a face, have a look that's like they're they're hurt. Where the the, the veil, the, the the you know, as I call it, the Raji shark eyes, <laughs> my denictating membrane will go over this, and I'll be like, where is the person that made her feel like that? And it, and it and it's not about uh, her any to me. I can understand someone being upset and wanting to protect her and make the wrong choice. The other thing I can understand is, and I, I don't want to speak for her, is and I what I would ask folks to do, or I want to just extend is like she shouldn't have to endure that. She shouldn't have to endure jokes constantly in every space about her. Right. It's it's the bad contract we've made with wealth. Mm-hmm. We we've created a horrible contract with wealth and humanity. Mm-hmm. We've done an inverse. We've said if you're poor, don't say anything about this person cuz you're poor. If you're rich, you the contract is you should be able to take what I dish out because you're rich. Mm-hmm. Which on its head is a laughable concept. Like money does a lot of shit for you, but it don't make you. It doesn't make it easier to someone to harm you, right? And, and, and for you to be okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and just you know, there's not a lot I could 
you know, I don't want to, but, but basically, even if, if Jada, if you're listening to this, hey, sis, they, you know, I appreciate your creative contribution to our society, and you shouldn't have to deal with that. And that's all. Shout out to Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Be more in the house. Yo, wild crew. I I got to say this too. I know because we be talking about really highfalutin concepts sometimes. Yo, y'all's a wild for y'all a wild couple. And not because of nothing that happened before. Right. But because y'all would not leave. Right. (laughs) That That is hilarious. That is the wild. That is the wildest part of it. I got to say, even sometimes wilder than the fact that he did it. Was not the fact that he did it, the fact that they did it, and then both looked at them and said, no, we ain't going nowhere. We still got an award to get. And a mug didn't know what to do with it. You couldn't figure that out. See, like I said, as much as, you know, again, I want to, like, I would like to think I always try to hold myself with a high regard. If I snapped, that's one thing. But then I snapped. I, I come into the reality of the impact of me snapping. And then someone says, well, we, we'd like you to, to leave. The premises, and y'all go no, nah, nah, nah beef. Now nah, we just going, we going to be we gonna stay right here. <laughs> now that for y'all do, Baltimore, Philadelphia, you can't take y'all nowhere for that I one. Because that's uh, and, and all I, I, I read people make comments like, well, how could they let them stay? And I was like, I mean, so y'all, y'all want the Academy Awards to get the security dudes to physically grab Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith. And their family. And then their family Charlie and entourage, Mack. Charlie Mack, <laughs> and yank them out the building. Right. Like, stop the show, stop the telecast, and because that's what we're asking for, right? So right. so so sometimes we 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 tell people things should happen and we don't hear the violence that's behind that. Right. Because it's, it, there's a thing like someone, you know, and I've dealt with situations in, in my professional capacity where someone refuses to leave, right? And so if you operate with certain humanistic, you know, constraints, right, where you'll go, all right. I, I can't like grab you and throw you up out this joint. Right. That wouldn't be appropriate. So I got to figure out how we're going to work this out. Right. right? So I might, I might sit next to you, but like, all right, well, you ain't going to leave. I'm going to sit right here with you. Okay. Is right. that cool? Right. You'd be like, all right, all right, cool. And like, go on with the show. Right. And then people might be like, well, why, why would you do that? You know, the reality of actually practicing, circling back to when someone comes outside of the frame of what we want to be healthy and what we think is right and exact. The reality of actually practicing that requires a different set of responses and responses. And, and I and I and I think I can say this, I think with some confidence. Anyone who's ever worked in a school, right? Anyone who's ever worked in a like community centery kind of environment, you know, especially where anyone's welcome. Um, anyone that's run an event in a public space where someone comes up and they prevent present a confounding challenge to what you want to have happen in the space and you have to make the decision is Whatever removing them, da da da, whatever that may be, is that also going to create a whole nother layer of issue, mm-hmm. right? And then you have to try to find the right weave to deal with this individual idiosyncratic situation and the circumstances that are attached to it. Um, again, it's, it, it requires a, a, an amazing intestinal fortitude to just be like, I ain't leaving. I know I'm about to win tonight, and y'all just gonna have to deal with it. Um, it, it, you know. Whatever that may be, but I also gonna understand them like we can't we can't have eight, you know, probably white dudes with, you know, uh athleisure, you know, fitness fighting suits, putting trying to put Will Smith in chicken wing, snap you know what I'm saying, snatching Jay to bring up in her in her in her dress. Yeah, you know I mean, like it turns into a whole other Yeah, you gotta make that's a you gotta make a tactical decision. Like yeah, the, the the tactics around that that you would have to utilize in order to get your desired result. Right. And, and then y'all aren't dealing with some sort of like, you know what I'm saying, as I would say, robust reciprocal principles where you go, hold up, y'all. We got to stop the show and have a circle now because something just happened with the, with the like, if, if this is operating sort of within right. the space of we're all in this entertainment world, not like somebody was going to go, all right, we're going to get in a circle on the stage, man, cut the, turn these other lights on. <laughs> well, what <laughs> happened? Go over, go over. Like, we're going to have a joint yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That ain't y'all values. Yeah, restorative justice. Right, you ain't going to do that. Right now, that might be something like in a family space, right? If in one of ours or something happened between brothers, we're like, look, man, we need to separate y'all for a minute to cool down. All right, everybody come back. We gotta we gotta talk about this because right. we all connected to each other, right? So you know that that's absent from that space, right? And, and so this is the things I want people to think about when you feeling all empowered to give all your various comments about what should or shouldn't happen. 
you know what I mean? Or you know who should be should be consequences. Look, I mean, in the words of Uncle Ruckus, paraphrase, they should have never gave y'all the internet. <laughs> They should have never let all, listen, I actually, there is a lot to be said for the democratization of voices and the democratization of voices that maybe traditionally may not have been heard, right, in in, 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 in traditional media. And I, I support that. And it's been an important thing. But they should have never gave y'all the internet. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think. I he yeah, it's over. And there's something very dangerous about doing think pieces and arguing with people around things you don't have all the information around. Like, it's one thing, I mean, we can laugh and say people have their own perspectives, but there's a conversation of like, I have to, the thought of I have to withhold judgment until I have all the information. And in most things, we, you know, I would think people, the thoughtful people say, I have to withhold judgment until I know more. But we don't do that, right? We don't know more. Now, as things are coming out more, there's more things to look at. Like I said, man, well, y'all could have maybe rolled. I understand you want to get your award, but like you did kind of uh, rock the boat a little bit, champ. <laughs> you did smack a dude on national television. So it's like... <laughs> But until I have more information to make an assertion about what happened, I don't really have, I don't have a side. And I, even if I did, I still don't have a side because they're, they're two people I don't know. And I just think that like, to your point about the think pieces and the judgments around who's right or who's wrong, um, we need to be more nuanced in our, in our public, in, in our public representation of our vantage points. Now, some might say that's what the internet is for, but I think it, um, you know, the internet is not neutral. Yeah. And what I mean by that is everyone, I think the data is in on the danger of the role of social media. I, I think that's, you know, just cause you don't have Netflix on me, you don't know that. <laughs> the data is in the people that work at social media companies will tell you <laughs> it's a, it's a trap, like literally. Right. Um, and so I just think that it's important for us not to then kind of create sides and have these debates with each other on the people we're supporting. Yeah. yeah. You know? And 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 I, and I think it's, I think it's really, I think for our own, you know, mental, our own mental health sometimes, you know, it's okay to accept that the parameters of what's happened there does not require me to make some closed judgment. Um, and that ultimately... You know, I, I will say this. I I hope that them two between themselves can find some resolution. Um, also, don't they, they don't never need to tell me nothing about it. That's right. Right. Like we feel entitled sometimes to like we need to know what happened with that. Actually, you don't. It's the contract about I gave you money two years ago. I spent fourteen dollars on a ticket to go see a movie. So in some ways. You owe me more, and you don't. If, you know now, now down the line, and maybe in a memoir or something. You know, what I'm saying maybe, maybe. I mean, hopefully, maybe if they get to whatever they get to, you know, maybe Chris weaves this into something to share through his comedic art, vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying to go about what happened, some thoughtfulness, but they don't owe it to us. And I think when we can get to a place where we we respect the idea, even if we witness something. You know, mm. like these are extraordinary circumstances that they're in, that we witness that. You know what I'm saying? Like people would maybe like, I, I feel like I'm back at my, you know, something that happened in my life. And that's that happens. That's the reality. You know, something happens internally. We turn in and, and bring up something from us, right, to make it relatable. Um, but still, ultimately, their re resolutions or wherever they go is with them. And, you know, like I said, I hope everyone involved, you know, finds what they need, you know, to be well going forward. So, Scooby-Doo. And, and the, it just, I think I do, you know, you made a really good point about the role of of Tyler Perry and Denzel Washington. Um, you know, just thinking, just owing to the origin story of these conversations, Ryan Shaohead, and just the maturity, right, and the maturity of, of two people who are responding to the humanity of people they consider friends, right? And again, there's, there's sometimes we have to decide, are we trying to be punitive or caring? You know, and when a misjudge, again, a misdeed is done, 
how do we need to do that? Now, again, we all can say now we want the carceral system to be changed because we want individual, we want collectively want, want this idea. But then when you see it individually, does your brain now respond differently? Right. Like, no, there needs to be punishment. Right. Right. Um, and figuring out how we do with that. So I do think there's, there's, um, there's a, a teachable moment in the role that both Denzel and Tyler Perry um, played and, you know, some of the backstage information, as they say, because clearly people recognize that this was like, be, I mean, saying that's beyond the pale, I'm not telling me that's beyond the pale, but it's a, this is an extraordinary circumstance. Yeah. And people were responding to the fact that it's an extraordinary circumstance. So I don't need to necessarily deal with it like it's normal. Right. I might have to utilize another kind of feeling because clearly there's something else here. You know what I mean? Um, one p- quick touch, if you don't mind, is um, mm-hmm. this thing about someone having a, a disability or a disease, right? I, I do think there's a place in our culture where, again, we've created these these weird covenants around what's not what's off limits and not off limits. Um, in the sense of giving comedians free reign to speak as they see fit. Um, I think, again, and I like comedians who do it. I like comedians who do kind of brush on the kind of barriers and parameters of maybe what's okay socially, some definitely politically, but sometimes socially. I know that comes with it. These guys don't write their jokes. And so I think uh, oh, that's, a, I don't know if everyone knows that, but you, Chris Rock didn't write those jokes. Those jokes were written for Chris Rock by writers who that's how they get their break, big break. If someone who wrote the joke had no idea that she has an autoimmune disease, then you're irresponsible. You're responsible. And I, I will apply the same thing to things that Dave Chappelle has said. So just, I mean, some of the shit Dave Chappelle says is irresponsible. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you might think it's funny. You might be brushing up against something. You might have some You might have some broader political context of why you're doing it. But that doesn't mean it's not irresponsible. It, it, it couldn't harm people. And then in the same way, so this idea, that, like, it's just a joke. Comedians, can comedians say whatever? And I, I just think, you know, especially when someone has an autoimmune disease, right? And especially, you know, whether, you know, I'm not with the, the mean patrol that show good hair, but there is something to be said that as black men, we know and understand when a woman's, when a black woman's hair and the what kind of issues that, that right, are right. that are there. Right. Everything that, that that's weaved. That's, yeah, that's weaved in. Pun, yeah, unintended pun. No, no pun Shoot, said, weaved into me. the hair. All of it, you know what I'm saying? It is crazy. <laughs> I just talked. That, that, that was a good one, though. I didn't that mean was, to do that, 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 though. That was, it just came out that way. But the reality is, there's there's a ton of there's stuff there stuff. that, in many ways, it's our role to go, I'm right here with you. I don't need to have, like, if me and you are at a place where me and you can have a personal conversation, right. we could do that. But it's not actually for me to make no whole bunch of. De- I'm not helping making a bunch of public proclamations necessary, I guess is what I should say, right? As a as a black man. But also I need to be tuned in. I mean, we just had, you know, the what's name bill pass around yeah, yeah the Crown Act. Um, other thing, you know, because that is a a particular attack point within the structure of the way racism is played out in our society as it relates to black women specifically. And whether we think it's the way they women should feel or don't feel is not our decision to make, right? If that's a, a particularly sensitive touch point, right? Or an area where it's, you know, Harvard's the one to deal with, you know, say, so so to speak, the frontal cortex and like analyze it from a, a dispassionate position, right? And he should know that if, you know, and why I challenged the idea that they were like, oh, he kind of went off the cuff. Y'all had the cameras like going like, because all that production stuff is time. Right? right. And so like you had shots where you was looking over to see reaction. So And you heard you know, and you heard it. how it dropped. <clears throat> like it dropped in 
it wasn't the usual. It was like a uh, like a thud came across, and he said, "What? It was a, like basically like responding like it was a bad joke, All right?" But. Yeah. So you knew it was a bad joke, and you knew it wouldn't drop right. And I, I can't say you knew because I don't, you know, had the knowledge that the way you dropped it and the way it dropped, it was received, and then the, your response to it before Will comes up, right. he's like, "What?" Right. AKA, yo, you knew it was beyond the, you knew it wasn't, right. you know what I mean? And so whether the person that wrote it knew it was like that, whether you knew it like that as an artist, as a performer. But most importantly, again, this idea of, okay, because they're wealthy or because they get on TV and talk about their lives, that they are now open to these other things right. because they have red table talks. I think there's like this one to one thing, oh, because they get paid to talk about their lives and talk about other people's lives. They're more open. They should be more open to our right, to whatever I need to acerbic, say like acerbic criticism. <sighs> well, you know, hopefully that all figures itself out. You know what I'm yeah. Everybody don't lose no sleep over all this stuff. Please don't lose no sleep. <laughs> children need things. People, houseless families. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Don't lose too much sleep around this particular situation. You know, take the best part. Um, before we, we exit, I thought we should at least say where we are um, on the tail end of, of some travels together up here in, um, in, in, in the great city. You know, one of the great American cities. The great, you know, probably one probably of the, the, I mean, the, you know, could argue, I argue, quintessential. Yeah, I argue that there are probably three great cities in America, New York, L.A., and Chicago. You could, I mean, Miami is an interesting place in the sense that... um it's kind of America, but it's kind of not in America. It's kind of a gateway to the rest of the, the gateway to the Southern Hemisphere. But like, I think I'm, I think Chicago is the most what I'm going to call "quote unquote" American of American cities, and I don't mean that by just like the people, right? But I just like the stu- the way that structured the story, the came, like, rail lines. A black man started it. No one wants to give his credit. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of real American shit happening <laughs> with Chicago, right? Um, obviously LA kind of similar to, to Miami in its own way, but also very fundamentally American, another place that black folks, black afro Mexicans was there. Nobody want to talk about that yet either. Um, you know, uh, but New York, I think is a, one of the quintessential global cities, right? Yeah. Like it exists. It has four Chinatowns. Right. Right. Like just to put it in context with the rest of the world is four. Um, but yeah, yeah, great city. Um, and I guess, it, you know, we went uptown to see a uh, talk with Black Thought and Tiny East Codes. We ate, we've eaten some delicious meals. Um, you know, I've been on a vegan adventure with my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Not that I'm anti that or whatever have you, but just, you know, for the record, you know what I'm saying? We ate some fine dining. What though, I guess just something I just want to share and reiterate because I was, you know, I've had to move around a bit the first part of this year um, in support of family. Um, And then, you know, within that, there's a, there's a strain and a, and a, and a drain, but uh, I think it's just a reminder that there's a value to traveling with people. Right. And especially, you know, I think as, as men, um, you know, I think, I don't know if we talked about this on this. I think we might, but just the idea, like you go travel and it's like, uh, what's that movie? It's like one of them bad movies, like Porky's or something. It's like, it's like, it's just, Debauchery and uh, drink it, uh, uh. Right. like it's like ah oh, man, like I mean that's cool if that's who you are. Right. I don't know. I'm not here to. I'm trying not to judge you. Yeah. But there's an importance of like sometimes you go places and you don't always have time to see or experience something. And um, a city like this city, there's a lot of different experiences available. Um, and you know, uh, it's the I think I just want to make a space to appreciate, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's been a good time, you know what I mean? Um, and and I would say my, my prominent <laughs> thought is uh, the idea of, of Black Thought, especially last night, that talk going, you know, realizing I'm a threat. Like, I got to, <laughs> like his words, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to be on something to be at my most excellent, right, in what you do. And, um, and just to say, like, it, uh, there's something to, in life to the degree that it's appropriate, right? Because it's not at every place in your life that you need to be the most excellent at stuff. But find something that you do well and be okay, you know what I'm saying, with that being a part. 
you know what I mean, of your movement. Um, so that that's my sort of reflection on being up here together, um, having the opportunity to actually record, you know, in, in the first person. Um, any just a reflection or thought, you know, on our, our, our travel today? Yeah, a couple, I mean, very similar to what you said, just like I think the idea of like, men traveling together and it's like debauchery ensues right <laughs> and I, I guess now we all it's all like that like girls trip i guess everything is like if four people get together they are letting all their inhibitions go and that's generally connected to it, wild hogs that was a joint with john travolta that, and, uh <laughs> martin lawrence the, right because if you get four men together they live lives where they're unhappy Right. So there's again, there's this underlying premise. My life is unhappy. So I get to be happy when I'm with y'all. We have to reframe that idea that you shouldn't necessarily be your life shouldn't be unhappy because that's what gives birth to excesses. Right. That's what gives birth to like, you know, people being like, I don't know what happened. They, next thing you know, they ended up in a drunken stupor outside and all this kind of stuff. Right. The, you know, they got a whole country. I mean, they got a whole city for it called Vegas. You're like, you know, <laughs> I got a whole city for your excesses. Um, but, you know, it is important for men and for black men to be able to travel together, to experience culture together, right? Um, to be able to eat, whether it's a plant-based diet or not, to be able to eat in places, coffee, you know, whatever, you, whatever you're into, to, to be able to do that and model that. Because the important thing also here is, how going back to this whole thing about frankly will smith how do we model manhood you know again as your old head like how do you model these kind of things um i was fortunate that my my father and my uncles um traveled together in much of my childhood so along with family traveling i also was able to see um black men travel together for business uh for sports tennis particularly um and, and for for all those things, so I think um, you know I'm I'm fortunate to to be able to have brothers like yourself and our other brothers who see the importance of traveling together, and you know also being supported by family, broader family who understand that it's important for Black men to travel together, um, and for those that to be parts of our lives and how we show up. Um, culturally, what we saw last night. I think um, when I think about uh, black male expression, um, and I think about Ta Nehisi Coates and his form of expression, and thinking about the role of the role of the roots music and Ta Nehisi Coates's life, mm -hmm. makes you think about the importance of culture and how you're taking culture in. And I think um, you know you made a great point last night about like the metaverse versus the real world and how a lot of us are taking in culture via the metaverse right now, which I think is a good gateway to the culture. Like it's a gateway to see things that maybe you would not have seen. We have more access to find more shit than we ever could have found before, but we shouldn't confuse that with actually the experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think the importance of culturally seeing our the people that we care about, not just rap and perform, but also talk. Right. We have to I think there's a space where we have to normalize how we hear the artists talk about their art, because it's one thing to just receive it, but another thing to hear it. And so when you hear Black Thought talk about being a threat, he's doing it with the insurance of someone who has dedicated thousands of hours to his craft mm -hmm. as a master of his craft. Right. Ty Easy Coates is talking as someone who has watched Black Thought master his craft as he has mastered his craft. And that was the whole power, I think, of what I seen when when we talked about doing this was like, you know, we we like to venerate the artists that came before us, but then the artists who were actually performing at a very high level right now, we might just be like, oh, okay. Versus like, no, let's hear the artist talk now the same way you wanted, we may have wanted to hear Jacob Lawrence talk when he was doing the art. Right. You want to hear Romeo Beard, you want to hear Coltrane talk about his music. Well, we you don't get that chance unless you see a documentary. But you do get to see a virtuoso, like Black Thought or a virtuoso, like uh, Tiny Easy Coates, in a fundamentally black place. Right. Talking about black art and black manhood and black music. Right. And I think something that's important, especially, in, in, like I said, the difference between being in the space, they didn't have to say in the room, 
but it's like a real black thing we're doing. Because everyone in the room, right? You, like you, you already know it, right? Right? Like you're at the Apollo, you're in Harlem, that they're on the stage. Like you don't like. There's places sometimes where you might have to go. You have to say this is a this is going to be a this is a black space, right? Everybody knows. That's right. Everybody's in the room. Anyone who's in the room that thought it was some other kind of space, but I don't know what kind of delusion they was operating in, right? right. Like you, and and so, and I, I think it's really important. Like we got all these tools and stuff, and, and and I think it's a great way to stay connected. But there's still, and I think, like I said, as as we come out of the other side, hopefully stay out of the pandemic yeah. circumstances, the value of actually being present. <laughs> Sitting in the room, the full range of emotions that you feel, the sights, the smell, the, the the way the room feels, the things that happened to you before you got in there, all of that stuff impacts our experience and then our actually understanding of what's happening to us, our response to it. And um, you know, it's one of those things I get to, you know, put on my, you know, on my checklist of like, oh, I got to, I got to hear those two um artists. And you know, creative folk folks that have impacted my life in a positive way, speak about them, speak with each other in real time while I'm here, not later. Like I watch the video and and I'm sort of empathizing with the moment. You know what I mean? Because it's just not the same. You know what I mean? And, and then you know, just as a shout out there, Black Thought, if you're listening, if there's any way folks could see that the, the play that you did last month, yeah. you know, you know, holla at a play. I mean, you know, you just some tickets out or something. <laughs> Yeah. Brother would like to have caught that because the timing didn't work out. Yeah, right. no, same, same, and that, and that was actually one of the reasons why I was like, yo, I think it's important because when you get a chance to see an artist who, you know, you, again, your origin story might be, you know, this person that for me now thirty years ago, right? Like thirty years ago is when I heard about the roots, and you put that in context, like thirty years ago, running up on them asking them when. You know when the next project's coming out, or when you can find where you can find organics and shit like that, right? That was like that secret. That was like that secret door you knocked on. You know what I'm saying? You had to knock. You had to go see them on 11th and Market, standing on the corner when people are selling mixtapes in, in in the gods' building. Like that's where you had to find them, right? And so for 30 years later to think about Questlove winning a Grammy, them doing plays, right? Like virtual so performances like okay this is the arc of black art in a way that we want to be really present with because again we like to venerate sometimes stuff that happened sometimes we don't always kind of recognize it when it's happening and i think tiny heasy coats and black thought are art living art that's happening and to see the living art happen in black spaces without you having to call it a black space because it's a black space right is a really important part of like that that we have to share with each other share with the world in real time and in the metaverse um and making sure that we're experiencing and supporting those kind of things so those things continue to exist because if we don't support them they don't continue to exist Yeah, man, and that's the only other thing I will add. Just, it's also remarkable to think about, um, you know, him saying that. And I was just thinking about, like, you know, we were making music at that time and understanding that, you know, you as an artist, when I was writing, I'd be like, damn, I got to, you know, there's a, I know I'm getting better at this, but there was a level of like, yeah, I hear other people, they're like, they, they up there. I got to get up there. You know what I'm saying? And I think in life, you know, sort of that striving for, for excellence in, in, the, in whatever it is you do in the world, you know, however it is you show up, you know, is a beautiful thing. And, um, you know, I don't know, I don't really have much else to say on it, but, you know, please go outside, you know, in a thoughtful, <laughs> uh, safe, safe manner, you know, and when you have the opportunity to connect with your folks, you know, my, my, my word would be to, to, to go and do it. Um, you know, and, and at least in the next couple of months when it's like, well, I could stay home and watch the stream or I could go down to go down to the thing, man, go down there and, I'm not standing out in no muddy fields no more. I'm, I'm beyond. I'm out of that <laughs> world for myself. I'm just let y'all know. No matter how much I'm really thinking about going to the roots picnic, I got to figure out if I can chill on a on a bench somewhere because I don't really want to stand outside in no muddy field. If that's what, <laughs> right? Because you don't know. I love I love field. music, but I don't know. You know what I mean? But that's my personal choice. You know what I mean, you got to live your own experiences out right. there. So if you're listening, you know what I'm saying, don't don't let me 
hold you back from saying something. So with that, um, I don't know. That's all I got. You got anything else for the good of the order? All good. All right. So with that, I say peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to Good Brothers. Thank you to my good brother, uh, Majestic. Uh, we try to have these conversations regularly. Um, if you enjoy what you've heard or your thoughts, feel free to reach out to uh, the Actual Head Podcast at uh, Justice Rod G on all the social media platforms. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, the number one thing you can do is to one, listen, two, share rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and you know get the word out and um you know extend the conversation about what you've heard um if this is in any way been an add-on for you uh the other aspect that's always important to know is that you can become a patron um search justice raji on patreon and choose a level that works for you to contribute something regularly monthly what have you that will offset um you know just the cost it takes to to, to put these uh, conversations, these little pieces on the internet. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there with that and um, say hopefully, you know, by the time you hear this, uh, you know, our national nightmare will be over as it pertains to the slap, but uh, I doubt that it will. So, in any event, thank you for listening and um, be safe out there. Peace.